and the way to get those plants up off the ground is to make yourself a nice plinth like this. How do you do that? Very easily by deconstructing one of these. Yes, a good old fashioned pallet. You cannot beat them for using a cheap method of finding wood. Sorry about that. Finding wood timber. I've got myself my workbench. I've got my ear defenders. We're going to be using quite largely a jigsaw with a fresh blade and the rest is basic. Let me show you how I'm going to do it. This is so easy, it's unbelievable. Well, what I did find was a pallet with some wide boards. My goodness, clean wood, wide boards. I've never had a pallet like this in years. It's the first one I've stripped down like that. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to make the best use of it I can. Let's get cracking. Okay, first job I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut along here. As you can see, these are the nail holes, five nail holes where the gum was holding the nails that dry through here into the base of the pallet. I don't really want those, so I'm going to cut those out. What I do is I'm just going to mark anywhere, just randomly in a line, just like this, but I then use a square, obviously, so that when I cut on that line, it is a straight edge. So I use a set square, and what I do is, when the set square, like this, isn't long enough, if you can see that, reverse it like this, and you should find, providing this edge is straight as well, that those two actually line up. There we go, I can draw my straight line. That gives me my first straight edge to work from, and now I'm going to make a square of that, of a predetermined size, which I will tell you in a moment. Now, I'm going to be using one of these workbenches, they're dead cheap. Do you know where I got this one? You wouldn't believe it. Actually got it from the dump, a guy was throwing it away. Now they're not expensive to buy in the first place. But they're dead handy because if we don't sell these, often we don't sell them if they're cheap. Probably get for about 20, 30 pounds, I don't know, 30, 40 dollars. But they've got these blocks, these, these sort of spacer blocks. If I can get one out for you, like that. Now these are clamps. And the whole top of the workbench has different holes in it. And people, really, some people don't know what they're for, but they're for putting these, these bases in, these, these clamps on their little legs, to a rough area to either advance or reduce that gap. So you can put pieces of wood in like this, and it grips it for sawing. It's dead easy, and I'll tell you what, the thing is, I normally use what's called a hop-up, but this way, I can actually, well it saves me bending down basically. Here's my mark, I've already marked up here. Now here, on this piece of scrap wood, this is only a piece of scrap wood, I've marked up with my set square. I could cut that straight away with this, but I'll show you what happens generally, trying to get the start of the cut, you might just see that blade wobble. Now, once I'm in here, I'm away. You can see I just mess up the edge there where the blade's trying to catch. So to get around that, what I do is I just put a groove in this with that handsaw just at the top. That's all it takes. It gets it started, and then this time I'll put the earphones on. When I line the blade up, obviously not going through the chair, the bench, or any work worktop. It should go straight through much cleaner. Now another tip. It can be very tempting to go through vertically like that. But what will happen is this blade will wander all over the place and you'll end up with what we call in England a donkey's hind leg like that. A curve. So the way I do it is I start on the tip there but then I lower it down gently, just the weight of the blade on there, so the blade gives me a straight cut there, and that follows itself all the way down. I'm going to put the earphones on, the defenders, and show you what I mean. There you can see I've already got a nice straight line, and I can follow that all the way through, keeping the blade not vertical,
but slightly lower and drawing it towards me. Don't force it. And that, as you can see, is a quick way of doing it. It's a little tip, but I've got another one for you. And you can see I've laid my wood here. There's my mark. I'm just going to wind these up tight. And as I do this, it pinches the wood in between those black clamps. This one's an old one, no wonder the guy threw it away, but there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever, as we will find out in a moment. Get it nice and flat. That's it, nipped up. I'm going to start by making an initial cut, just drawing the blade back across here, like this, of a handsaw. Okay, that's fine. Now I'm going to use a reciprocal saw to cut along there, put the air defenders on. Okay, well that's got rid of the nail ridden piece there, that goes away on the big heat for the log burner. Now I want to make this square for these, uh, take, to raise these plant pots up. And at the present time, this is 24 centimetres that way. So obviously going to come 24 here. Mark it with a nice thick fat marking carpenter's pencil. Use your square once more to get that line dead straight and ensure that you do indeed have a square. This is so easy. It's ridiculous. You can, once you get a system going, you can make quite a few of these. I'm sliding it along in the workbench now. I'm going to cut that end off. What I'm going to do is make that extra little saw cut again, just to start it with a hand saw. It gives it a groove. I just got to sand the edges off, and that's the top done. It's got a nice knot there as well. When you're sanding off edges, take the sandpaper, get a scrap of wood, and this saves your fingers and splinters. And you can work away getting those rough edges off and all the little shavings along the side. Now then, I want to make the legs for this. And again, I'm going to be using pallet wood for the legs. I'm going to be using a nice piece of pallet wood there. It's quite clean. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to stain it anyway. Now, I'm going to cut this. I want four pieces, the same edge, same size as this edge here, see? So I'm going to be putting four pieces like that, cutting it here, along, cutting it here, four pieces all around the edge. Do that first. Simply butt one end up against the edge and just do a small mark there. And I'll bring it round onto the wider side, just here. Both sides so you get it nice and square. That's it. I can even use a piece of wood which we know is square. Because we've already cut it. If you do it that way, it's probably the best way. That's one side just there. That's one side. I'm going to cut that one. Same principle, even with a bit bigger wood. I'm just going to do a pre cut. Now I could saw that all the way through with this saw, but I'm not going to. I'm going to use a reciprocal saw to save time. Now listen, previously been doing a wide piece of wood here, and you think, oh my god, it's not going to close enough. Well you could put it in that gap there, but you're not supposed to. What you're supposed to do is pull these blocks out, realign them closer in, to narrow it right down. You've got generally on these workbench, tall, tall bench things, you've got four blocks. That way, as you can see, those gripping blocks are a lot closer together. You can wind them up tight, and you just, you know what, it just keeps everything nice and snug, and a little bit of safety doesn't go amiss. Put my foot on the base of it and whisk this off. Okay, here's my four support legs brackets, call them what you will. Now I could join them, just nail them together like that. Man, that looked pretty bodgy. I want to cut a chamfer 45 degree angles down there. Now, I suppose you could put it in a vise and do it with a hand saw like this. It's more than likely going to be wavy. You can also do it with your jigsaw, but again, that's, you've got to 
crank it over at the side. And of course, this base plate there is meant there for a reason, is to lay flat and give you a vertical plane to cut with the blade. That's why it's flat. But what a lot of you might not know, a lot of people will do, and I apologize for those that do know everything, but there might be some DIYers out, out there that don't realize they just got one of these sort of jigsaws in a box somewhere. And don't realize you can actually alter. They've got screws underneath. And if you slacken those screws off, you can alter the angle of the base plate. Now, some of the tools, not mentioning this mate, because they don't do me any favors. I pay for it like everybody else. Make sure you know whether you're either right-handed or left-handed. I'm right-handed. I'm going to crank it over from there flat 90 degrees, 45 degrees. Some of them will have marks on them. This one, I don't think has any marks on them. I've used it many times on the angle and you re-tighten the screws up. That will give you your 45 degree angle. In fact, I just felt it click then, so I figured that's on the 45 degree angle. So maybe there's a little notch or something that it goes into. I have unplugged this before I even start messing around with it. I have to tell you that. Always, if you're going to start messing around, changing blades, looking at things, please unplug the tool first and then plug it back in, in readiness. There we go. Power on. Right, let's put all this to a side. This is more time consuming than technical. I want to cut an angle across here, so I'm going to put it in here, in my little vise, clamp it down as best possible and then I'm going to mark with a pencil the exact width of another piece that it has to marry up to. Let me show you. What I'm doing is I want to cut an angle across here but I also want to get that angle as the outside leading edge of that cut just there where that pencil is. So it's going to be matching up with this one. So I therefore place this one on the edge exactly like that and I'm going to mark it. The width of the other leg like that. Okay, there. You can see that hopefully on the camera. Now, this leg here, the cutting leg, needs to be in line with that all the way along there. And that's why I just hold it like that. You start with the blade over at that angle. And then I'm going to work along on a tiny little angle there. There might be a gap of a few millimeters. And that's what you want to follow so you don't do a wavy cut. Try and keep it as straight as you can. Because don't forget at this angle, you don't get a real shot at the blade viewing that. It's more, once you made the first cut, you should be on that line and follow that gap there. And fingers crossed, it all works out. Now, the other thing is, I've got a knot there I'm about to go through. So just make sure you don't push it too hard because knotted wood is always harder to cut. Just let the teeth of the blade do the cutting for you. And I'm halfway through the cut and I'm noticing there's about two mil, three mil difference between the edge of that and the line. I can follow that all the way up and hopefully retain a straight cut. Hopefully there you can see there's a nice angle. All I have to do is sand it off. I'm going to turn it around, place it back, lock it with the blocks and the little vice bit, get my other block, get the exact width there that I want to marry up to, mark on the side quite well with a fat pencil, nice big fat pencil like this one. And then do my other cut, has to be the same size. Just say again, don't force, just let it go through and push it at an even pressure. Okay, I've now got my four cuts, as you can see, like this, you can now see Miss that sanding down business. You can see the four cuts like this I've got. Now those joints 
will butt up like this. Really nice and neat and square. And you could drill that and screw it, you could glue it, you could glue it, screw it, nail it, everything it, but it's only gonna take the weight of a pot. So the actual weight is coming on the top of here where that surface plate is, you know, the piece of wood on the top. So it's never gonna break. I personally am gonna use a couple of panel pins in here to hold it, and I think, honestly, that'll be enough. So these are panel pins, just so you know. That sort of size panel pin, maybe three quarters of an inch, something like that. Or if you want it, that's for inside. If you're going outside, you might want something a bit longer. What's called a lost head nail there. A lost head nail, and that's maybe inch and three quarters. So I do one for inside and one for outside. I just use the panel pins inside, they're not gonna rust out. And the outside pins may be something a little bit stronger. So I'm now gonna nail this base box together like that. Now that's a standard box shape and that's fine but I want to do something a little bit more artistic because sometimes you don't actually want to put those plant supports outside you might something you might want something a little bit better on the inside of the house maybe on a patio maybe on some decking you want something that looks a bit better than just a plain well block base and this is what I do there is the angle cuts so it's going to be standing that way it can go either way obviously that way there's the base I'm going to make it a little bit more artistic. I'm going to come in one and a half inches, hold still, from the end there. Okay, just put a mark there. Let's turn it around, one and a half inches from the end there. That's just there. About one inch up. Yes, yeah, just going to make two little feet here. That's all I'm going to be doing, but I'm making a bit of shape to the bottom. What we'd almost call a bracket foot years ago. Okay, it doesn't look much there, but that's going to be a, a straight line. In fact, I talk so much about using the square I should in fact use it. So it's coming down there, that's going to be the start. And I'm going to come there, just in the inch and a half. And there's the start there. Now, I want to in here somehow incorporate a sweeping curve. So first I'm going to find the central point. That is 23 and a half, which is an 11 and 3 quarter centimeters I'm doing there I'm going to find just the central point of that base base leg there draw a very light line that's the center now how can I get that sweet sweeping curve up here back over there and back down again I'm going to be using any bottle with a circular base that I can so I'm going to line up just imagine that line comes along here the bottom of the bottle in the middle there and do a sweep up this way, like that. Can you see that mark there? I'm hoping you can see this. And the same. Let's move it back a bit so I can see what I'm doing. Just there, so I get, you've got to measure equidistant there. We don't have to measure, you can do it by eye almost this. Okay, I've marked there. So I've got my two upward curves. What am I gonna do about the other one? Well, I'm gonna use a larger base bottle because that gives me a softer curve. And then, probably come in somewhere around about there. If you look at it this way, I want to come in so it joins those two somehow. Now let's see, it might be a bit thin, but it gives me a guide. I'll join that up. There's the bottle. I'm in the center here, there's my center line. If I come around and just space a pencil, ah, uh, here we go, it's, it's joining up, it's joining up, it's joining up. My God, rocket science. I think I could launch a rocket. Now, you'll see I've got the curve coming around like that. I'm going to leave this bracket. This here is going to be cut out. And that leaves me a nice shape. But little tip on cutting this out with a jigsaw, because with tight angles, you need to put some circles in there with the drill to get the blade in. Because you can imagine the blade cannot come all the way down here and suddenly make a right angle. You're going to snap the blade. You don't want to start the curve too much. I'm going to drill a big hole here, here on the most acute places of the angles and here. Right, let's get that done first. I'm going to be using a drill bit here that is wider than the blade of the saw. 
So therefore, this will go through the hole I've made with the drill. Hang it up, put that there. I'm just gonna put a drill through there and allow the top of the drill circle cutting the edge there and there. Don't go right on the corner, it'll be too deep. You've got to come so the circle is just cut by the it's just touching that line and that line. Away we go. Right, now that gives me scope to put the blade in there. I can cut up to that circle and then just turn the blade without any pressure and start along there as well. I'll put these other holes in there, just inside the tight curves. Okay, you can see there, I've got a nice artistic curve and shape by using those two bottle curves, tying them up together, and I've still got the bracket feet there. And there's my angle cuts. But listen, you don't have to put the bottles and mark each piece of wood. Simply take your next piece of wood, turn this over, I'll turn it around so you can see that way, line the edges up, get it dead level, and then just run your pencil around, get the same, using it as a template, get the same outline. That's the stuff that's coming out. That's what's going to be cut out. Drill your holes in the acute angles here, where the blade can turn easier then. And you can do these quite quickly, cut them all out. It makes life a whole lot easier. I've got them all cut out now. Piece of wood, old scrap of the wood, piece of sandpaper. Clean it all up. Time consuming, mildly boring, but necessary. see there it's all nailed together as a base I simply place the top on make sure it's nice and neat there you can screw it I see no reason not to glue it should you so wish maybe an outside one I would glue as well but for inside I, yeah, I really don't think you need to do it try and avoid not so if you can notice I'm not driving them in I'm just making sure it's all square around the edge first. Just one in each corner or thereabouts. That's all nice and straight. If I leave them like this, then of course I can leave them out and relocate it and readjust it if I want to. Feels good to me. did that take and lovely bracket feet there really nice I'm going to give these two I've made a pair of these I'm going to give them both a nice stain of decking and we'll see what they look like in the morning with a plant pot on them well, there you go it's all finished it's pretty cool I'm very pleased with the stain in and this is what they look like outside <laughs>